Oh, Bill Foss is going to give an introduction. So uh, we want to, I got my three treasures together. We dug deep and have a gift and present for Bruce. Oh Bruce, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bag of hot air. No, 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 a t-shirt up for the yeah. 50th anniversary. There you yeah. go. $10. So I might add uh, for Tom, uh, Tom and Ray Stafford, who's no longer with us, really set up all these uh, uh, boards, both the photos and the posting of that. And uh, Tom has been very helpful in uh, putting all that together. In addition, uh, I became very envious because Tom has a second residence, a four-story chateau in southern France. So if you have his email address, ping him and see if he can get a place to stay there. Um, but Tom, Tom? I think it's stage 12 of the Tour de France is starting about five minutes from Tom's house and he has space in his house. So if you want to go see the tour. Tom also is not a loss for words. So Tom? Hold on to the microphone. Don't just give it away. Otherwise. Uh, okay, we're going to start with this first picture, Bruce. This is your originator of Penvelo. And the story of Penvelo goes back to Adali Alpini, which was a, at that time a very large club like Penvelo. Lots of tourists, lots of uh, bike riders, period, and some racers. Uh, Steve Aldrich had been hired uh, to come to Sugden and Lynch down in Menlo Park as a, a mechanic. That's where he started his career. He then got hired by Gordon Moore of Talbots to come up to San Mateo to start his uh, big bike section at Talbots. Well, as the case may be, um, Ray Stafford was a member of Pedali Alpini. He was a good friend of Steve. They had that uh, very traditional uh, conflict between tourists and racers because Talbot said here's a couple thousand dollars to sponsor your uh, your team and of course many members of Pedali Alpini said oh payday we're all gonna get something uh, and the racers said what no this is for racing and that conflict was ultimately decided when Ray and Steve Aldrich um, and uh, Rich Holder another very prominent early member of the team said we can fix that. We have a solution. Um, we're going to start a new team. It's going to be called Peninsula Velo, sponsored by Talbot Cyclery, and we're taking the sponsorship money. Thank you, because we're a pure racing team. And you might go down and find one of those small uh, pictures of of the team that went for uh, a training camp. Training camps are always very important to Penn Velo. They went up to the Ride Hotel up in the Delta. Great riding up there, flatter than a pancake, plenty of headwinds to work on. But that's where that's where the team bonded together. And uh, Tom and, and Bill Robertson uh, were members of that. This is that picture up in the upper right-hand corner. There's Steve Aldrich there. Ray Stafford's the second one right in front of Bill Robertson. Lots of stars in that group. This is a pure racing team. And that's what Penn Velo was for probably the next half dozen years. Um, and racing is what we all did. We went up to the Tour of Okanagan uh, up in British Columbia uh, for two years. Had a couple of teams up there. And one of our, our good members, Jim Bell, can't be here today because his business is leading uh, recreational activity up in Reno Tahoe area. So he is on the rapids. And we're going to see if we can get a uh, telephone call to him uh, and do a little FaceTime for the members of the, of the team in those days. Um, what's this one? Uh, okay, let's talk about Mark Kahn. Raise your hand, Mark. Raise your hand. Let people know who you are. Come on up. Come 1979. On. It was kind of Mark or final stun. You got any papers you got to write? You're still a student at, at UC. How, how's your free time, Mark? We got an idea. How about we set a new record nonstop? San Francisco City Hall to Los Angeles City Hall. Mark, are you in? How about it? Why not? Why oh, why not? Yeah, nothing be else going on. yeah, nothing else is going on. So here's what we did. Um, now I don't know about this first one very much because I was only around for the first leg 
of San Francisco to Half Moon Bay. At that point, um, we were supposed to have a change on the motorcycle, which was going to illuminate because it was what midnight by that time. Uh, I was going to be the guide to get through Santa Cruz and then down. And uh, as the guys um, got through shift change, Mark was still, he'd just take a little break, half a minute while we get everybody else organized, get the next four guys in line. Guys, wait, wait, hang on. Don't go, don't go yet. Shh. They had vanished. I didn't know the route. I wandered around Watsonville until about four in the morning and then got a motel. Uh, I didn't make the rest of the ride, but you guys did. Um, and frequent food changes or food alert. Um, you want to talk about what you ate on the route down? They have to, they have to come over here. I can't reach them. Right. Okay, remember, don't give him the mic. You'll never get it back. Food's being served now from the left hand oh, side. Forget, of the yeah, forget that. <laughs> yeah. You know, as I recall, Tom, it was one Becky Simpson who cooked up a storm, especially Becky's special muffins, or I think the uh, prune muffins. How about that? And, and as we ask, three not enough four too many you know what <clears throat> we made it i you know i had to look back in my log before i came out here in 79 i had a note that uh <clears throat> i i didn't eat nearly enough you have to remember nutrition was uh you know the stone age back then so we learned a lot in 1980 i just ate and ate and ate and um made a big difference but tom let me go back how in the hell did you come up with this idea who i mean why san francisco to la i i never i never asked you i you know i'm curious tom hardy perhaps you're aware of this uh in the uk city to city time records very important back in the 70s before uh english cycling really got international uh they have the Road Time Trial Association, which was equal to the road cycling. And those guys, they do 10 mile time trials, 25, 50, 100 mile, and then they do the 24 hour. All of those are timed record holders. But, well, we can do that. Why? Yeah. We can get Mark, I mean, somebody, uh, we can get Mark to uh, join us and go for that ride down to LA. Um, and not just once but i guess you were slow enough on the uptake to say oh yeah I'll, sure tom i'll do it again you know you have to be young and foolish and um i think uh that fit the description back in the day tom mentioned he got lost on his motorcycle you have to remember our lighting back then was something called a wonder light kind of a rectangular flashlight that you put on the clamped on the handlebars which was basically useless wonderless light so um we had a lot of fun there's a there's a great picture here at the end of the 1980 ride and i think i never never laughed so much um as i did on that ride we had a lot of characters there it is bruce bruce has it um jim rogers who's no longer with us and uh fritz is fritz here did fritz make it so anyway the uh the jokes flowed and i just kept pedaling and i think there was someone else that was supposed to do the whole ride i don't remember who it was ah and um you know i was a diesel back then i'm just a slower diesel now so um i just kept uh kept rolling feed me and i can keep pedaling so and what was, well, your, what was your time it was around 26 hours, I think, the first year just over, and the second year when we got a little smarter, right? Had a, had a lead motorcycle. We didn't start quite as late. The first year we started at 9 p.m., which was a big mistake because we were all up for a day. Second year we, we moved it up and um, just had a, you know, I guess you could say learned life lessons learned uh, learned from our experience and still had uh, a blast along the way so thank you to tom and bill and everyone else and we we could have made it in 24 
We were on schedule, and then we got to Malibu and Los Angeles and stoplights and more stoplights and more stoplights. So, yeah, that last uh, 25 miles, never ending, never ending. Thank you. Mark, are you busy next week? Just, just checking, you know, just maybe if you a little spare hey, time. Tom, lose my phone number, please. Oh, yeah. Well, wait, you you live where in um, uh, Zamboanga? Yeah, I don't have that phone number. We're good. All right. Well, and Bruce, what are you pulling up now? Oh, okay. Here is our first Penn Velo national champion, Martha Stafford in 1982. Our first national road champ. Martha was a member of us, uh, and especially a big big team member at the uh, Safeco Women's Trophy stage race, the only all-women stage race in the U.S. at the time. Lots of fun out there on the coast, lots of fun finishing in Burlingame around the uh, rec center and the library downtown. It was, a, it was a whale of a time, and we still had, uh, before I lost my job, and had to go to work for a living. Oh. How many people here remember Pinky's Road Race? How many people here bear the scars of Pinky's Road Race? Uh, Pinky's was another bright idea that we had started with out there. Pinky's actually was the name of the roadhouse out at the intersection of uh, Highway 1 and... Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the road. Okay, now the, yeah, don't get old. Which, thank you, Don, Gazos Creek. That's where the race was originally started and then went down up and over um, um, Cloverdale Road back into uh, Pescadero and, and farther. Um, okay. Oh, you know what? Here's Clark Natwick. He gets to take this home. He wins the prize. In fact, here is an old Clark club Enspert jersey. Fred, Fred Fisk, you might remember this one too. Club Enspert. Well, let's go get some of these. This won't, maybe this will come with me. We're going to go down here and and we'll look at some of these boards to bring us back up to uh, normal. Okay, talking about the women's stage race. Bruce has got that. He's got pictures of what that looked like downtown Burlingame and out in Half Moon Bay, Pescadero. And then we got a board here for a couple of those early stars. Bill Robertson, a board for you to take home. 1970, was it five? Up 75 right outside Greg Lamont's house, winning the championship. And so here is, oh, and I've got another little package for you too, of, of Ray Stafford stuff. I want to interject something. You wonder how popular cycling was in Northern California compared to the rest of the United States. Now, back then the United States Cycling Federation would award uh, places in the national championships based on the number of riders in your district. And so when I was in Wisconsin, we had six riders that could go to nationals at the end of the, of the race, top six. But in Northern California, it was such a hotbed of cycling, 15 places in the NorCal District Road Race qualified for the national championship. So you felt pretty good if you were, if you were pretty fit as long as you didn't let too many moves go up the road. But still, that tells you how competitive it was here in Northern California. And for years, the, the Olympic teams you know, George Mount wasn't the only one. There were guys like Dave Bull, and uh, I, you know, kind of names kind of escaped me because they were kind of before me. But, but NorCal really was a hotbed of cycling. So, for this team, for Penn Valley to come into an area to start up a club and be as successful as they were, really speaks volumes for the talent that was here uh, in the peninsula. So, and, and again, Bill winning at age 18. That's kind of Greg Lamont esque. Uh, when, when did you start your pro career in Europe, Bill? I never. <laughs> But I don't know if you know anything about Bill. Bill, Bill, you, you've not only got a couple of fast bikes, but I understand you have a pretty fast car. Yes. Born with a love of cars, it's not a choice. 
<laughs> but I hear you, you, have a, you have a 962? I sold it. I have a 992 GT3 Cup car that I raced. Nine, uh, Porsche 992 GT3. I think Eric Wolberg took that out on the... Uh, uh, I took him for a ride and Yuki just a couple months ago. So if you guys follow the uh, follow that a uh, nine nine three those those cars um they're a little more expensive than Tesla aren't they Bill? I'm not telling. <laughs> there you go. It's unsustainable. <laughs> and, and not only is he a great bike handler, he's a great car handler. He saved about eight people's lives coming back from a race when the back tire blew. There you go. Well, so so this is. The, so what, next time you're, you're going to buy your next bike, just remind your spouse, your significant other, that Bill has a 99, Porsche 993 and that the new, you know, full, you know, Dura-Ace, Di2, 12-speed, everything is a lot less than a Porsche 993 cup car, right? Just a little? How, how, how do you simulate uh, cup car racing? Do you stand in a, a pit of boiling oil ripping up $100 bills? That's it. That's exactly right. It's a... It's yeah, I don't know. It's just the most thrilling thing ever, driving a car like that. So, it makes you proud of mankind. So I try to get about two or 3,000 miles out of a set of bike tires. How many miles do you get out of a set of uh, 993 cup tires? 25 minutes. <laughs> there you go. And, and you can't buy them online. It, it, uh, it, yeah, so you, you... Big slicks. We're running uh, Yokohama slicks now. Oh, my gosh. Well, Bill Robertson, everybody. Tom, I'm going to hand the microphone back over to you, but... But uh, Bill, again, winning the NorCal District Championships. How did you do at Nationals that year? I don't remember. I got fifth in the Nationals in 1970. When you were intermediate boy, age 14. So, so this tells you, nowadays this would never happen, but some of us who have been around for a while, do you know, do you know what the, the, so they had age categories starting from like 9 to 10, 11 to 12, uh, 13 to 14. You know what they called the 9 to 10 category back then? You ready for this? Midgets. Midgets. Can you imagine using that term now? <laughs> no way. Yeah. So that was that was how well how uh, how would we say well grounded the ABLA and the U United States Cycling Federation was. Did anybody race as a midget? Anybody a midget racer? Oh, excuse me. Anybody a vertically challenged racer? <laughs> there you go, Rod Jewett. There you go. Rod, you were a long-time sponsor of the team, right, with Bianchi Bicycles? Thank you, Rod, and a good track rider as well, and as road. But I'm going to hand this back over to Tom because we're still walking down memory lane. I see a Tom Hardy poster over there. Should I go get that? Okay. Well, you have to go pick that one up for me. Uh, Tom Hardy, front and center. Walk, walk, walk. Oh, and you know what? Forgot to tell everybody again. Food is on the table. Now, now we are walking. Oh, this is the, the very famous picture of track, you know, road nationals. Isn't that the one back in New York? Olympic trials, yeah. Got to turn around. Got to turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Feudal, feudal as in. No, it's like feudal. Yes, my lord. Yes, surf. Oh, no. That, it, it wasn't exactly the, the kind of courses. There were four races there. It didn't really suit me or Bill, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say. But Bill and I were roommates back there in, uh, where was that? Not like, yeah, Saranac Lake. And uh, it, was, it was pretty flat, so it didn't, didn't really uh, go to our strength. Here's the strength that you go to. Berkeley Hills. Find a hill. Even a blind pig gets some corn. <laughs> <laughs> so, has anybody else been to the Olympic trials? I went to the Olympic trials in 1980, the year we boycotted. Mark, you, anybody else been to the Olympic trials? Yeah, Fred? 84. 84. Yeah, there you go. The Olympic trials are always fun to go because to try to make the Olympic team, you think, I might have a shot. Well, I was there with Greg Lamont, yeah. Hal Tozer. Everybody remember Hal Tozer? Oh, yeah. You know, Andy Weaver, all those guys. I didn't have a shot. But I remember the funny thing was, this is a good Greg Lamont story. The 10-mile course was in Zanesville, Ohio, near Ohio State University there, near Columbus. And with one 10-mile lap to go, Greg Lamont was two minutes behind the breakaway. In the final 10-mile lap, 
Greg broke away solo, caught the breakaway, and put two minutes on the on on the breakaway, and soloed in for the. Well, actually, Tom Schuler got on his wheel, but in the final 10 miles, the final 20, 22 minutes of the Olympic road race uh, qualifications, Greg went four minutes faster than anybody else in the field. And of course, we didn't go that year, but still, it was an incredible performance. So that's what the Olympic trials are all about, Tom. You know? I'm sorry, I don't recognize what the Olympic trials are. You say that's the way we used to select the Olympic team by racing head to head? Oh. How old-fashioned. No, no, no. We're going by contract length now, I think, aren't we? So uh, I have too, way too many stories, but did everybody know Megan? Remember Megan Guanier, who was racing here? So Megan, you know, in, in 2015, she got third in the world championship, so she that was one of the qualifications for the, world, for, the, for the Olympics. So if you get top three in the world championships, you qualify for the Olympic team. But there was a codicil in the qualifications. You only qualify for the Olympic team in 2016 if you demonstrate the same form in 2016 that you used to get third place in 2015 at the world. So they gave themselves that out. They could sit there and say, well, Ted, you were really fast in 2015, but 2016, you've been spending a little bit too much time with the ladies and, uh, you know, and, uh, or McDonald's after your training ride. So, so even though Megan had quote unquote made the team, there was still an out where they could sit there and say, well, we don't think you have the same form as, as you did last year, so you, you can't be on the team. So, so now they've gone to a full committee now. They don't even have Olympic trials. And they just sit around and decide, you know, this guy looks fast, this guy looks fast. Brandon McNulty, he was, he was in the break with Richard Carpas at the 2021 Olympics, so he's back on the team. They're bringing a triathlete in the time trial. But so, yeah, the Olympic trials are gone. That was always a great time. You always thought you had a shot. You know, something could happen, right? You could just have that day. You could get in the breakaway and just have the legs. Tony yeah, Tony Cruz, there you go. Uh, but anyways, doesn't happen anymore. Mark, what was your experience? Come up here and tell us, tell us your experience at the Olympic trials in, in uh, 1984. Did you have lunch already? <laughs> Did I have lunch? Oh, okay. You qualified. No. <laughs> this is gonna be very short. This is gonna be a very short description. I was packed filler, no question, in Spokane. <laughs> there, there was, uh, I was taking up space, you know, finishing was impressive for me, um, but uh, the reality, and you know how 84 turned out with Alexi winning in LA. Um, I did not have a shot, but it was chasing a dream. And uh, as you say, who knows? Someone could roll a bowling ball down the middle of the field. Everyone falls down, and Mark Kahn has to go. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mark. All right, we're still taking a trip down memory lane. Uh, please do feel free to go get some food. You, you know, we are not, um, what's it going to put this? We are not, uh, 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 we don't feel slighted if you're over there having a hot dog uh, while we're talking, but... Tom did such a great job. These are all put together by Tom, I believe. Tom, he's the chief photographer on many of these. And uh, and so he put these together to kind of bring the club down memory lane. So Tom, I'm going to hold this up and you're going to describe it. This is one of our, our most illustrious alumni, Eric Allen. He was a member of uh, two consecutive junior world's teams who went to Europe. Um, at the time, he went to Eddie Merckx's factory and, and had a personal tour by uh, the maestro himself, but Eric was literally an early star, and he burned very bright. This is his, uh, his um, record going down to the uh, NorCal individual time trial. Uh, this is the banner that we made to hold up in uh, Talbot's bike shop to proclaim Eric won. He shattered the old record. And the irony was it couldn't be an official record because uh, there were not enough official stopwatches still running at the time. These were analog stopwatches. They were not digital. And we had four watches running. And at the end of his ride, only one remained operable. So it couldn't be submitted for a record. But Eric's record as, as a racer, Eric's record as, as a human, uh, it was just uh, insurmountable. He was an awesome guy. Um, he sent postcards back to us from Europe 
uh, telling us about his trip. How much he appreciated the support from uh, the Talbots team, uh, and and he and he responded with great performances, and we were just uh, we were tragically alerted uh, to his accident. He was kind of reaching a second point of his life and career. He was getting ready to go go to school full time, but he was riding his bike to work when uh, a gravel truck. I uh, didn't see him, and, and he was killed. Uh, but he certainly leaves uh, a great legacy for Ben Solovello, uh, for which we remember him. So I think, I think that's good enough to bring everybody up to date. Uh, it's lunchtime. Let's go get some. Thank you for listening to, to me and Bruce, because that's also about as much voice as I have left. Oh, it's lunch. Oh, bag lunch. It's your, it's your lunch, Tom. Uh, those of you that have your photos on any of these boards, feel free to take the board. Otherwise, uh, Becky Simpson and my wife, they don't want it in the garage. So if, if you appear and it's you want it, take it. Otherwise, it will probably be in my garage. Let's give it up for Bill Fallis here, one of the founding members. He brought fame and fortune to the team as a racer and now as one of our founding members. We want to celebrate what you've done for Penn Bell and what everybody's done for Penn Bell. Thank you for being here. Another 50 years is coming our way. Yeah, 100. There you go. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Here's Tablis 1974. No mystery. 50 years cycling history. Peninsula Bell promotes recreational riding, racing, and bicycling advocacy in the San Francisco Bay Area. Ben Bello. Oh! Oh, established nothing. Probably newbies. Um, yeah, we had him a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah, he was a he was